They never look back. A message was delivered. Cheney's Owls are not inclined on giving up the number one spot. Chris Brooks came to West Virginia, a prized blue chipper. He strives to meet the great expectations. For now, Coach Gail Catlett has had to rely on his senior, Tyrone Shaw, and the all-around ability of junior Daryl Prue, who leads the Mountaineers on the boards. West Virginia versus number one Temple on USA. From the West Virginia University Coliseum, USA Sports brings you College Basketball 88. Tonight, the West Virginia Mountaineers host the number one Temple Owls. Hi everybody, I'm Al Albert and welcome to College Basketball on USA. The Temple Owls are flying higher than their number one ranking. They have silenced some of their critics who felt their schedule was too soft to rank as number one. When they went into North Carolina on Sunday and they handed the Tar Heels their worst home defeat in over a decade. No question the most meaningful victory of the 22 for Temple this year. Bucky Waters, no question that Temple really uh, caught North Carolina at the right time. Well, Al, they did. They played back-to-back uh, -back Saturday and Sunday, but Carolina's deep. I think the real story was the defense of Temple. 29 turnovers against the North Carolina team that really cherishes the ball. The key there, Howard Evans. He had seven steals all by himself. Offensively, he's just dynamite. With nine assists a game, a 12-point scoring average, he's a guy that has to lead this club. The Mountaineers are going to press tonight because they have weak perimeter shooting. They've got to turn it into a pressing game. And Howard Evans, the point guard, the senior, has got to keep this club together. Temple, perfect in 14 games in the Atlantic 10 Conference. And just three weeks ago, the Mountaineers were the same. They were 10-0. But since they've gone through the floor, they have lost four of the last five conference games. What has happened to West Virginia? Well, I think the loss in Peoria to Bradley, a 31-point whipping. Since then, they haven't really been the same. But it's there, and especially in this building where the Mountaineers win 91% of the time. Darryl Prue is key. He's an inside player playing out of position. At 6'7", the, uh, the junior from Washington is a blue chipper. He has great hands, and that's going to be crucial because, as J.R. Reed found out at the Sunday afternoon Owls picnic, there isn't much room inside of that defense. Mountaineer perimeter shooting, shaky. It, they've got to get transition baskets. If they do, this place will rock, and another, yet another, number one will go down here. Well, Temple could be just what the doctor ordered for West Virginia, the prescription, a shot of adrenaline. Number one Temple in West Virginia on U.S. You in part by Ford and your John Cheney masks. for the Temple Owls. Starting at a forward, wearing number 33, a 6'9 senior from Freehold, New Jersey, Tim Perry. <laughs> Starting at a forward, wearing number 32, a 6'7 junior from Morrisville, Pennsylvania, Mike Breezewick. <laughs> Starting at center, wearing number 44, a 6'10 senior from Carolina, Puerto Rico, Ramon Rivas. Starting at guard, wearing number 21, a 6'1 senior from Philadelphia, Howard Evans. And starting at a guard, wearing number 12, a 6'5 freshman from Saginaw, Michigan, Mark Macon. And the head coach of the Temple Owls is John Cheney. And now let's roll out the carpet and bring on the Mountaineers. Tradition is a big part of Mountaineer basketball, and tonight the tradition continues with the introductions of the senior player. Escorted by his father, Thomas Mitchell, and his wife, Regina, a 6'7 forward from Alexandria, Virginia, number 53, Tyrone Shaw. In his WVU career and escorted by his mother, Geraldine Seeley, a 6'4 senior from New York City, number 30. Here in their home court, they welcome Temple tonight. 
up number one Temple. They will be meeting in Temple on Sunday, but tonight is what is their concern right now. And there are the officials, Hank Nichols, Len Wirtz, and Jim Reif working tonight's game. The big crowd at the Coliseum in West Virginia as the teams work their way to the center of the court as you take a look at the starting lineups intact for Temple just about all the way. Those five and the comparisons and Bucky you take a look at the turnovers and you see the major difference. Turnovers and free throw shooting Al have been crucial. Temple's been in a lot of close ball games and that's what wins them for you. Well you saw Temple's casual stroll during the introductions. No highs, no lows for John Cheney, and he hopes no letdowns after victories like Sunday against North Carolina. That was a tremendous high. They don't waste a lot of energy on high fives and boogaloos. They operate like surgeons, but tonight they're in an emotional setting very similar to the one they faced in Chapel Hill. Can they do it twice in a row? We'll see. What does West Virginia have to do to beat Temple tonight? They've got to get transition baskets, and they've got to get better shooting from the perimeter than they've received in the last five or six games like that that shot's going to be there against the matchup so Chris Brooks misses on his first attempt and Al Temple for the first time works it inside to Rivas West Virginia was back but they really weren't ready to play a direct feed down into the low post Steve Berger number four the sophomore the native of West Virginia there is Chris Brooks Shaw number 53, their leading scorer, averaging 13 a game. Seeley for three. Kirk Seeley, who is starting in his final game as a senior in the regular season, and he has just tripled his average per game with that shot. It could be one of those full moon nights. Trying to beat West Virginia in Morgantown can be trying to beat like beating Dracula in Transylvania at night. And the crowd is on its feet. Breezewood travels. A rare turnover for Temple. They average but nine turnovers a game. And that ignites the crowd. And there is the Mountaineer. You'll be hearing from him throughout the night. And Berger looks to set it up. Gail Catlett. Wants his team to be sure of the basketball. No turnovers. Temple forced North Carolina into 29 turnovers. 16 steals. <laughs> 17 on the shot clock. Seeley looking for the game of his life. And he is stuffed by Perry. Fast break. It is Evans and Macon. Macon with the shot. Virginia ball. This is an intense series going back to 1929. West Virginia holds the one game edge. Last year, Temple won here in West Virginia, but West Virginia went to McGonagall in Philadelphia and snapped the Owls' 33 game streak on their home court. These two teams met for the Atlantic 10 title last season, won by Temple, and that game was in Philly. This year, the conference title will be decided right here. So West Virginia knows they could deliver a message going into the finals on their home floor. Ooh, for two. In addition to the obvious scoring, it also gives the Mountaineers a chance to set up their press. They've really got to try to shake up Temple. They cannot just get in a standing game with them, not with their perimeter shooting. And Perry is hacked on the arm. The foul is called on Daryl Prue, and that is one of Prue's big problems. His aggressiveness inside, he has fouled out five times this year. And now Seeley, number 30, the senior, comes out. He has already supplied three points more than West Virginia could hope for. And Herbie Brooks, who normally starts, the junior, is in the lineup. I think we'll see Kirk Seeley again. When you're playing number one and you've lost four out of five, you're looking for an emotional edge. This could be indeed one of those nights for Seeley. He is very talented. He just never has been able to pick up the complexities of Gail Catlett's offense and defense. Gail runs a very uh, multi 
option of offense and defense, and it's tough for junior college kids in two years. Could they be feeling the pressure as Perry misses two? And the shot's not falling for Temple. Berger brings it out for three. Ripped down by Brooks. The Mountaineers banging the boards, and they still control a reset of the 45 as Berger weaves out of traffic and sets it up again. John Cheney's sweater almost came unraveled. Chris Brooks must have sat in the lane for about seven seconds. Shaw rejected by Perry, his second block. Regained by Shaw, shot put. And Perry rips it down with Temple trailing in the opening minutes, five to two. Evans knocks it. Boy, is he tough. Last year, he was a two guard with Nate Blackwell handling the ball. This year, with Mark Macon, the phenomenal freshman, he's been asked to be the point guard. And he just does whatever John Cheney asks. John gives him the highest compliment. He is a Philly guard. That's like Green Beret. It says it all. He is shooting nearly 50% from three-point range. Now 39 of 81. Tied at five. Mountaineers have to be careful. An awful lot of adrenaline in this opening salvo by them. Uh, the ball's not dropping, but they're jumping higher and running faster. Normally after that, you get a little dip. Gatlet may have to substitute more quickly. Shot clock is down to five. They are nowhere near a shot. The force by Brooks. Daryl Prue uses his 6'7", 225 pounds to burl inside. And it's a 7-5 West Virginia lead. Breezewick will shoot from anywhere. West Virginia ball. And a timeout is taken. Five minutes into the first half. John Cheney tugs at the draws as he trails early. Mountaineers on three other occasions, they have knocked off a number one team. And Bucky, I'm sure you remember the one in 65-66 against Duke very well. Yeah, the head coach at West Virginia was a 29-year-old guy, a former Duke assistant by the name of Bucky Waters. Who Boy, did, did he grow up and get some <laughs> scar tissue that night? Led the Mountaineers to three consecutive 19-9 seasons. And now the Mountaineers in the same position. This time they have number one in their backyard where they have won 111 games and lost just 13 over the last decade. It is a seven to five lead for West Virginia. Make it nine to five. Chris Brooks, the prized freshman. So far the Mountaineer pressure is just nuisance, not creating much in the way of a turnover. But you have to remember, there are only seven players for Temple, and they're trying to get to that bench. A three-pointer for the fabulous freshman, Mark Macon, who in the last four games has really exploded. He's led Temple in each of the four since they've been number named number one of the nation. He's averaging 25 points a game in those four and shooting 65% from the floor. Incredible. And, and there is Chris Brooks. He has not been living up to the incredibly high expectations coming out of high school, but tonight he is so far rising to the occasion. Macon now has hit two straight. One point lead for the Mountaineers. Macon is the only Al who has scored in double figures every game this year. Yeah, he's, he's been blessed Al. He's joined a veteran club. That's the best possible situation for him to break in. And blessed with Howard Evans aside from him. Indeed, and uh, but it still doesn't matter. Precocious is the only word that comes to mind. He just doesn't play like a freshman. It's hey. incredible. West Virginia using the clock, trying to give the Owls less possessions. Temple not a good shooting team, but they put the ball up quite a bit. That has been the difference. Shaw stays with it. Curry and Rivas have that pump fake pretty well timed. I think Shaw to just quick jump and take it right up. Great man now for West Virginia. Changing it up again. Catlett doesn't want him to dig in. But it really doesn't matter with Temple. It's like three guys wrapped around two. And they just hunt. Take what you give them. A three. Three's 
Keswick underneath. It won't count. Traveling violation. Rieswick, who doesn't like to put the ball on the floor, even when he's on the perimeter, got a little excited that time. Good call. Thirteen to ten, the home team Mountaineers lead the visiting Owls. Shaw works it to Berger, who is guarded now by the dangerous Evans. Brooks takes it in, and he is fouled. So far, the Owls having more success at penetrating inside than North Carolina had on Sunday. Superb penetration here. The 6'6 Brooklyn native just knifes his way through here, and he had to get it over some tough cookies. Tim Perry was absolutely checking his tonsils. Perry, seventh in the nation in rejects. Almost nailed that one in the nickel seats. So the lead expands to five. Frieswick for three. Mike Frieswick picks up where he left off Sunday when he hit five three-pointers on way to a career-high 26 against the Tar Heels. And it's a 15-13 lead for West Virginia. And West Virginia puts a man at the high post that tends to really keep Evans at home. And is inside, and that's against the Mountaineers. Tyrone Shaw got a little anxious trying to slip in from the back. The first foul on Tyrone Shaw, and it's a two-point lead for the Mountaineers as we pause for these words from our local cable system. Boy, talk about Temple trying to follow up their great performance on Sunday. How'd you like to try to follow that 63-point performance? That was a whole month for me. Amazing stats here, Al. Temple, five for nine, only six rebounds, two turnovers. West Virginia, twice as many shots, seven for 18. They got a three rebound edge and no turnovers, and that's key. No turnovers against a Temple team that forced 29 against the number five rated Tar Heel. One of the reasons for Temple's success, the more shots they get off. And tonight, 18 shots for West Virginia. Incredible mark in the first eight and a half minutes. And there is the first turnover against the Mountaineers. Out of the timeout, Dale Catlett going 2-3 last time. That's the fourth defense he's shown them. But it doesn't bother Temple as much as it does other teams because Evans is just going to root around and find something and nail you. Temple incredibly poised. Remember the last time you saw them, they trailed 8 nothing to Villanova. And that's the second three-pointer for v Frieswick. Six points, two from downtown. Well, Frieswick, they call him Frieswick in Philadelphia, can go in spurts. He was 0 for 10 in that cliffhanger against uh, Penn South. State uh, right. just the other night, and then came back to hit the last two for six points and get him out with a one-point win. So he blows hot and cold. He was 0 for 10 against LaSalle early in the season and scored 10 of the last 12 points for Temple in the victory. Brooks trying to get position. Chris Brooks, a tank, 6'6 six, six and 220. Ten and a half left in the first half. And Temple leads for the first time tonight. They have hit four three-pointers. Five seconds on the shot clock. Herbie Brooks finds the spot and gets his first of the night. He is averaging 12 a game. The Mountaineers scored that time, elected not to set up pressure. Back in a straight man for man, the direct feed in. They've just got to deny that post pass. Revis and Perry can do it down there. They both play well within themselves. They're not going to do anything they're not capable of, but that was like an eight-footer. One point lead for Temple. They won here last year, but lost to the Mountaineers at Gonico. And then beat the Mountaineers in the Atlantic 10 championship. That played in Philadelphia. Temple gets the ball back. In theory, one of the best ways to beat a matchup is the penetration by the dribble. Just 
take it into the paint and create havoc. But it's very tough to do to go by all those quick hands. Griswick on fire. He now has eight and in a hurry. Well, Dale Catlin has to do a couple of things. One, he's got to do something about the perimeter shot and he's got to front the post. Right now, they're doing neither. And the Mountaineers don't have to stay on defense very long. It's been one pass and a shot. Shaw barrels in. It counts and he is fouled. Rivas on his back. <laughs> They gave Frieswick down the other end the three points on that last shot, and not a two. Good power move inside. Tyrone Shaw, who's had a problem with migraine headaches, in fact was questionable Saturday night in New York in the game against Rhode Island, but here he keeps it alive. Slithers right by Rivas. Did you see Rivas take a swipe at him? It's a good thing he didn't get him. Shaw last year, the big gun for West Virginia against Temple. He averaged 15 points and 10 rebounds a game. He has five tonight. And it's a one-point Temple lead. They have already hit five three-pointers. Three of them by Threeswick. Here's Bacon for just two. Run down by Evans. West Virginia now trying to front the post. It is called on Rebus. So he gets his second very quickly. The Mountaineers turned up the defensive pressure. Now with the fronting process going on by Prue, Rebus gets a little bit impatient. It doesn't take much of a shove with that big arm. He goes like 260, and that's conservative. You're watching the number one team of the nation, the Temple Owls, in a struggle here in West Virginia on USA as Rivas sits down with a couple of personal fouls. And number 31, Dwayne Coswell, the 6'11 sophomore, checks in, and he has shown some flashes of brilliance off the bench. Temple, not a very deep team. John Chaney, you're generally relying on the six people you've seen already. Coswell actually a better athlete than Rivas, but does not have the experience. Brooks is covered by Coswell. The shots keep on coming. And West Virginia keeps on getting the rebounds and setting up for more, but they're not hitting. Rivas going out with eight minutes and change. He will not come back in in the John Chaney scheme of things. If you have two fouls in the first half, he keeps you down so that you go into the second half with three. And that one is ripped down by Darrell Prue, who's been very silent so far in the first half. Mark Macon went through that process in Chapel Hill, getting two quick ones set out ten minutes. In the process, Temple went down five at the half, but came back with that incredible 19-point run uh, to start the second half. And boy, he was rested and he proved it. He scored 15 of his 19 points in the second half. Temple holds on to the one-point lead. West Virginia holds on to the ball. Again, working the clock down. Prue barrels in, and now West Virginia leads. Again, the Mountaineers creating that inside game, picking on Coswell a little bit. The outside shooting for West Virginia has just not been good all year. Boy, they are inspired. It stays there, but first a timeout with 7-10 left in the first half. West Virginia won their first 10 games in the Atlantic 10. They have since dropped four or five, but they have come to life tonight against number one Temple. Carroll Prue beating Coswell on the entry pass. Tim Perry thinking a little bit better of it. Perry normally would have gone after that with a vengeance, as good a rejector as he is. But I think with Rebus down with two, he's got to play a little more cautiously. Key though, Al, Evans is the indispensable player, in my opinion, for Temple. If he's out of there, they just can't replace his point card capacity. If Macon goes to point and Breezewick comes to the backcourt, they're not nearly as effective. So while all those parts are important, he is the main man, not Macon. That is six of nine from downtown for the Temple Owls. Second one from Macon. So Temple, with a three-point shot, has outscored West Virginia 18-3. to three. But they lead by only two. 6.44 left in the first half in West Virginia. 
with West Virginia working the clock each time, it appears Cheney has said, let's take a few more chances in the passing lane. They're really not looking for the shot till they get to 15 seconds, so we've got a license to try to make a steal. And boy, can they. The shot clock is now down to eight. And Temple will pack it in, give the <laughs> Mountaineers the shot, and they come can't, out with it again. Al, can't you just smell the bushwhack? I mean, you know, when the ball's bouncing around like that and they keep getting the ball back, that's one of those full moon mentalities. The last home game for the seniors, they, you know, all the ingredients are there. West Virginia's problems with the outside shooting. No perimeter game, which uh, is a domino effect, Bucky, because, of course, that then affects the inside players. Well, too, they've, they've just had a hard time at the free throw line. So many games have just been decided right at the end. Oh. Chris Brooks explodes. Oh, oh. Steve Berger from Boomer, West Virginia, throws this one up. Now we're talking Boomer there. Chris Book buries this one. The blue chipper brings this crowd to us. Watch a couple of little steps. Timing is perfect and a chance to make it three. Brooks is a 39% foul shooter. He does not add to the scoreboard from the line. He's averaging 12 points a game. West Virginia has it again. They have knotted it up. 24-24 with five and a half left. The irony of watching this game is because of the great success of the three-point shot by Temple, uh, you know, it's kept them in the game. It appears the Mountaineers are out playing them in every other way. Shaw takes it inside. And it is ripped down by Coswell. And now Temple on the run. A rare fast break tonight. Evans for three. Oh. No one can ever say this team is overcoached. It is masterful coaching. Not when you have your players so disciplined, they run around like robots, but when they can think uh, on the move and make that kind of judgment and decision and never have to look sideways to the bench. His team shoot with confidence. They may take one or two bad shots, but they never look to the sidelines if they put up one. Temple has made nine field goals in this first half, seven of them three-pointers. That was the three by Brooks, and there is the other Brooks, Chris, who is pounding away inside. He's in double figures. He is emerging tonight. Brooks is going to be a fine player. He's only a freshman. Rieswick. And here is Berger on the run. The foul on number 23, Chris Brooks. Lenny Works makes this call from the baseline. Berger penetrates. Little hot dog guy. He didn't need all that finger roll. All he had to do was shoot it. He doesn't get the good roll. And Chris Brooks, who's coming like a greyhound. Coswell gives a little bit. Boy, I'll tell you, that's either great officiating or a tough, tough call for the Mountaineers. But... But Len Wirtz was right there, and that's where he's supposed to be watching. Tim Perry representing the inside game for the Owls. And it's 29 to 26. You weren't keeping score, and you were watching this game. Who do you think be winning? Yeah, well, by the, a lot. The crowd helps to color that, too. They're so enthusiastic, but it appears that they're being out hustled, Temple. But they just come down and nail it. Well, Vrieswick says, listen, we come down with a three-pointer, they go down for the two-pointer, and again, that adds up. You don't have to be a math major. Crew punched out by Macon into the hands of Shaw. Three minutes and 12 seconds left in the first half. Al Albert with Bucky Waters bringing you college basketball on USA. The number one Temple Owls. With the hard ingredients rebounding, and those key areas of not any turnovers, West Virginia is playing better. There is only one ingredient right now that favors Temple. Exquisite three-point shooting. No foul, and here are the Owls, four on three, Lincoln for three. 
and Brooks the other way. Shaw, the wrong man if you want to start a fast break. Now they get into the hands of Berger. He penetrates, hits. First basket for Steve Berger. And it is a one-point Temple lead. The entire West Virginia coaching staff are wearing huge carnations in their lapels. And I'm telling you, on that call, they all were singed brown. And a sophomore from Queens Village, New York, Dwayne Coswell, hits his average with that shot. Two points for Coswell. 31-28, Temple looking for their 23rd victory in 24 games this year, atop the nation. They have been number one now for three weeks. West Virginia again using that clock. One of the great stats to illustrate Temple's success too, they hold their opponents to 39% field goal shooting. That's incredible with a matchup. Well, West Virginia helps them out tonight on that stat. There's an example. One-on-one, -on -one, Brooks and Perry. Well, that's inexperienced. Chris Brooks taking that ball back in one arm. Around the basket, you got to keep that ball high, and you got to keep two hands on it. There's a brick coming off the rim. He was trying to make the big dunk. He had a chance to go for three, but when you lay it out there with one hand, you just know you're going to get nudged at a minimum. Well, Perry paid the price for being under the basket. The foul, though, was on Coswell, and now Perry was wrapped in the face will be going out and or check that Perry stays in Coswell comes out Sean Johnson the junior from Philadelphia out of Overpeck High School is in the cheer from the crowd for Brooks who makes a foul shot <laughs> he is one of three which is around his average and that may be the reason that Cheney brought Coswell out saw something wants to talk it over Coswell will be made that very meaningful for Temple the rest of the way. The crowd explodes. WVU shooting. There's the, uh, there's the offensive rebounding statistic that has kept West Virginia in this game. They're shooting only 39%, which is what Temple average is giving an opponent from the floor. But they have eight more boards, and they've been converting those stickbacks. Temple shooting 57% on the road. Well, you're seeing uh, John Cheney's uh, face everywhere here at the Coliseum. Macon gets his shot, and the soft touch does not fall. Inside the foul against number 34, Sean Johnson of the Owls. A wide-body banger. Boy, did he clear out some Mountaineers under there. It looked like bowling for dollars. Some big people moved. Well, with uh, Revis out, John Cheney has uh, filled that void. We are now down to a minute 15 left in the first half. This one is airtight as West Virginia. Here's a team who lost 13 games at home in a decade and are the underdog on their home floor. They're trying to pull off the upset against the number one team in the nation, the Owls of Temple. Well, this team had a great January. Only lost one game, as we pointed out, to, in Peoria to Bradley. But uh, they're just right in a funk right now. They need something like a quality opponent like this to, to really put it together for them. With a shot clock down to five seconds, Steve Berger connects, and West Virginia is back in front. 35 seconds left in the half. And now Temple seeing some pressure. Little half-court trap that time. That's the sixth defense I've seen. Playing for the one shot and for the lead at halftime. It's a special play. They're going to work for Macon. And now Evans gives the okay. There is Macon. He is double teamed. Evans. Swish. A three-pointer by the senior, the solid Howard Evans, with a second to go. Half. Breezewick giving up the ball and then cutting through the gut of the man for man. Actually, it was a matchup at that point. Howard Evans, who had five assists, gets one here. Breezewick three for five from the three-point stripe for nine points. The Mountaineers, on the other hand, had to go down inside. They had an incredible 13 offensive rebounds, six of them by this man. 
Tyrone Shaw, who was two for nine from the floor in the first half. But look at this second effort. He comes back up and in to get two for nine. He had six offensive rebounds alone. So inside, it was WVU much stronger. Tonight's first half. Tired of looking at the Mountaineer muscle. They want to make it a 94-foot game. Rebus back in with two fouls. There are the individual scorers. Evans is three for three for three pointers, and Frieswick is three for five. Those are the only shots that they have taken. Macon is struggling, three of ten from the floor. And the freshman, Chris Brooks, rising to the occasion, five of nine from the floor. He has 12 points to lead the way, four of his five rebounds off the offensive board. So Temple with the outside game, and West Virginia with the inside game. 20 minutes of basketball to go. Temple, a record of 22 and 1, sits atop the nation. West Virginia, a record of 16 and 10, trying to break out of the doldrums. And Frieswick comes out hot, and that is only a two-pointer. Oh, I'm sure Temple fans everywhere are disappointed. They're used to seeing that guy launch rockets. You know what he is? He's a right-handed Chris Mullen, a gym rat with a radar uh, sight. I mean, he's incredible. He doesn't put it on the floor. He just jacks it up and nails it. That's his only two-point basket or attempt tonight. Bacon looks for the steal. Instead, he gets the foul. Bucky, try to take us into the locker room of John Cheney. What do you think he said to his team at halftime? Well, we got to get tougher down inside, and we've got to get out on the passing lanes. They're milking the clock on us. They're taking it down to five or six seconds. We have a license to try and make the steal because they're really not looking to score early in their set offense and uh, just get on those boards. They really missed Rivas, uh, who was out nearly 12 minutes uh, of the first half uh, because of his two fouls, and that's Cheney's style. Berger number four, as we set up West Virginia, number 32, Herbie Brooks. That's Tyrone Shaw. Looking at Daryl Crew, who makes the move with the left hand. Gets his own rebound and is fouled. Again, you get the feeling that uh, whatever happening is, is happening out there, that uh, it's West Virginia's night. Third foul on Macon, big, big foul, and it was a brick. I mean, you know, it was not a good shot. It didn't catch iron, and it caught Temple flat-footed. I think they were expecting a rebound. That one kind of dropped through the chimney. And it catches Macon inside, battling for the rebound. Third foul on Macon, who has had problems getting started tonight. And he will be leaving. Darryl Crew. Last year, he was a 38% shooter from the foul line. He's upped it to 50% this year. Crowd responds as Pearsall comes in. But the response is for that man sitting down, the freshman, who's been averaging 25 points a game, shooting 65% from the floor in the last four, since Temple has been named number one. But he'll be watching the next few minutes from the bench. And could this turn it right here? Bacon sits down with three fouls. And it's a two-point game. And West Virginia hitting their free throws. Darren Pearsall, number 11, the junior from Chester, Pennsylvania, comes in. He is long and lean at 6'7 and 180. There's Perry going out to 15 feet, which he can do easily. For the most part, he stays down inside. Everybody stays within their roles for Temple. Making the leading scorer, 20 a game. Vrieswick at 16 and Perry at 15. Temple, though, not losing its cool. And with all the pressure and being out rebounded, still maintains the lead. Brooks. He had the shot, but looked to go in closer to Prue. An owl touched it last. Tough to make that second pass underneath against that matchup. The hands are quick and the bodies are big underneath with Perry and Rivas. Uh, he had a wide open 14-footer there. You got to take it. Alley -oop. And this will go against Brooks. Looking to sneak behind Rivas. Second foul on Brooks. Mac Nichols on the baseline saw something I didn't see. It looked like a free ball and two going for it. Let's watch it. Actually, the pass was thrown a little short. Good call. Brooks trying to come back over Perry because the alley oop was underthrown. Hank Nichols is here, by the way, subbing for Dick Paparo. 
has had a little back problem. We have some debris on the floor. That's why uh, the game was halted for a moment. And it could be on Brooks again. So Chris Brooks, who had the sensational first half, hurting himself here in the second, has picked up fouls two and three on the last two sequences. We're 2.15 into the second half. Evans had five assists in the first half, and that breaks a school record for a single season. Rieswick, swish. They've got to make Rieswick put the ball on the floor. After a guy shows you that that many times, you got to say, hey, pal, what else you got in your act? But the standing J is automatic. If it isn't now, it will be soon. And the crowd responds and cheers the official for calling that foul against Pearsall, against Temple. Catlett may be looking at the team on the floor right now for Temple. We have another chance to look here. The Mountaineers on offense. Good move inside by Brooks. Brooks' first team All-American High School at Oak Hill Academy. 22 points, 13 rebounds, five blocks a game, and shot 69% from the floor. Coming out, uh, they felt that uh, he would be a great one. And he has had an adjustment this first year. Traveling violation. The Mountaineers again getting good real estate position down inside and trying to do one thing too much. An extra pass, an extra step. I made the point, as, as Catlett looks at this Temple team on the floor, he does have a triangle and two, and it's Rieswick and Evans that are basically killing him. That may be one thing we can look forward to here in a few minutes. Might try to make somebody else do something. Rebus almost put Prue into the upper deck. Third foul on Rivas. So Rivas joins Macon and Brooks with three. Gail Catlett, though, not electing to take Brooks out of the game. Well, that's part of the, the residue of the good inside and good offensive rebounding by West Virginia. They're starting to get fouls in that front court. Temple is not a deep team. Nor is West Virginia. The last six in which they've lost five, the bench has averaged two points a game. But they have a lot of interchangeable bodies. Tough shot by Berger, but it is run down by Shaw. Herbie Brooks, who scored 35 points a game in high school. Most of those were inside, though. He's one of those inside players that's still making the conversion to the perimeter. Junior out of Mullins, West Virginia. Shot clock still shows plenty of time. 24 seconds. Well executed game plan by the Mountaineers. They've been successful keeping Temple on defense. Pearsall, the foul, says I just raised my hand. And a timeout will be taken. Temple playing with Mark Macon on the bench with three fouls, but John Cheney's team on USA Tonight. Number one, Temple in action. They are being beaten soundly on the boards, but the Owls with Macon on the bench have still opened up their biggest lead. West Virginia fans excited about a 15 to three differential in offensive rebounding. It's pretty easy to figure out. West Virginia shooting 39%. Temple shooting 62%. There are a lot more offensive rebounds for the Mountaineers. Inside goes Prue. He gathers a crowd. And now the officials uh, trying to weed out. It is on Pearsall, I believe. So he has picked up his third very quickly. In a matter of minutes, he has as many fouls as Macon. Temple, as Bucky mentioned, shooting 62%. That's 16 of 26 from the floor. And half of those field goals made are three-pointers. Turnovers are dead even at four each. Both teams have taken care of the ball. That's not a surprise for Temple. That's, you know, uh, turnovers there are not pastry. Boy, they are tough, tough, tough when it comes to taking care of that ball. West Virginia doing an amazing job based on their season so far at matching that stat, four each. Brew out of Dunbar High School in Washington. He is three of four from the line, but 
Rivas was in too soon. And our rate, John Cheney, Rivas won't give up the ball. <laughs> and it's, oh, there was a foul. Len Wirtz came across and said he stepped in too soon. Okay, it, that's, that's all. He's getting another shot. There was not another foul. So Prue gets another try. 50% foul shooter. And it is run down by Perry. Uh, just killing the Mountaineers and has over this last losing streak of five out of six. Evans goes right up. First miss is Rieswick for a rare offensive rebound for the Owls. And he draws the foul. Now you can get complacent as an offensive rebounder if you play for Temple. There just aren't very many. It's kind of like the Maytag repairman. He doesn't get much action. The team foul situation. We have 15-13 left in the half. That's kind of interesting, too, in that matchup. That's one of the uh, advantages. Not supposed to commit too many fouls. Quick release for Vrieswick, and he has his fourth three-pointer. 16, he is the high man in the game. Vrieswick once again coming through. He had 26 against North Carolina. He has his first foul. Yeah, he tied a career high against the Tar Heels and didn't have a very good start in that game. He's been very even tonight. He's just, he's just been sticking them all night long. But as we pointed out, he's gone 0 for 10 and come back uh, and just burned you at the end. So I still I still maintain he's got to put that ball on the floor. He hasn't shown but one thing to the Mountaineers tonight. They haven't made him adjust. Gail Catlett, seven straight 20 win seasons. And it is in jeopardy this year. He has a game Sunday at Temple and Wednesday at St. Bonaventure to round out the regular season. 16 wins for West Virginia against 10 defeats. And the Owls without Shake and Bake Macon, who's been sitting out now almost seven minutes, has not only maintained their lead, they've extended it. That's impressive. Because he is the best talent on the team. Pearsall lets it go, and he is clobbered, and it is number four on Chris Brooks. Not a wise decision on Brooks' part there. A tough shot from a guy off the bench taking, what, his first shot of the night, and Brooks playing with three fouls has to be careful. Well, he's uh, looking for a license number, that's for sure. That's the fourth foul on the Mountaineers. Still 14.42 to go. And a freshman from up the road in Pittsburgh, Mike Yost, 6'7", 2'10". And he checks in. He's not a very physical player, but he's going to be a good one. They have high hopes for uh, Yost. Good range, quickness to get inside and score. He's just not used to playing games yet. Better in practice than on the uh, playing floor. Perry gets inside. So Tim Perry has banged away. He is the inside presence for Temple. Eight points in there. And now it's an eight-point lead, and Macon's enjoying this one from the bench. Again, Howard Evans making the entry pass. Beautiful, right on the hand. John Cheney takes a better look at the bench as he goes down the stretch towards tournament time. Herbie Brooks takes a look. Not much of a threat from the outside for West Virginia. Here is Yost, covered by Pearsall. Shaw in traffic. And he draws the foul. Well, the Mountaineers are unswayed from their game plan. Patient, patient, patient. Make the entry pass. Yost, coming in the game, makes a nice entry bounce pass. In traffic. Tyrone Shaw takes it to the basket. Not a good release. But they're obviously, with one thing in mind, create that inside game and keep mounting the fouls. Rivas has four. And Perry's playing just a little soft because of it. A lot of time to go. Almost 14 minutes. Shaw in his second season with West Virginia, transferred from uh, San Jacinto Junior College. They went undefeated his last year there, 37-0, winning the National Junior College Championship. And Shaw averaged 27 a game. 
Pearsall. And it is ripped down by Prue, the Mountaineers' leading rebounder. Near steal by Evans, the foul on Evans. When you're playing against Temple, you better go meet the pass. They don't play you real hard head up, but they play very tough in the passing lanes. They have a lot of confidence in Perry behind them to pick up their mistakes. Take a look at John Cheney. You would uh, figure he's down by six at this point. Jim Maloney next to him, former head coach at Niagara and assistant at Maryland, and 12 years he's been an assistant at, uh, at Temple. Worked there first for Don Casey. The opening came for Cheney when Casey went into the pros after he won 61% of his games. I keep looking for Don Casey to come back into college basketball someday. But it created an opening. Cheney had a 14, 15 year, his first year with Temple. And from then on, it's been nothing but gravy for the Owls. Cheney, the sixth year at Temple, his fifth straight 20 win season. He has 13 20 win seasons in 20 years as a coach. Rieswick overshoots. Oh, nice pass. And Rivas gets Rieswick the quote assist. The Mountaineers got the message. They made Rieswick put the ball on the floor and they got an air ball. Or a heck of a pass to Ramon, whichever way you look at it. Who uses the body inside? He's in double figures with 11. And it's a four point game. Temple trying to hold on to the number one spot. They have a meeting in Duquesne on Thursday and then Sunday return home to face these Mountaineers before closing out the regular season Wednesday against St. Joe's at the Palestra. Jim Sadlin has Duquesne playing much better than the Atlantic 10. The crowd comes alive. Perry tries to silence them. And he was really hit inside by Tyrone Shaw. Second foul on Shaw. And that is the fifth team foul on West Virginia. Once both teams get to the bonus, and West Virginia already in the bonus, you also may see a difference on the scoreboard. The Owls, a good shooting team at 73% from the foul line. Mountaineers, 60%. Perry is not one of the better foul shooters on Temple at 62. Looks pretty good up there. The this big guy has a great release. And after missing his first two foul shots, comes through there. Ten points for Perry, and the lead again is six. Mountaineers have lost their last two Atlantic 10 games at home. Being upset by George Washington. They are leading by six with two and a half minutes to go, and GW scored the last nine points to beat him. Also lost at home to Rhode Island. If Temple wins this, they will clinch the Atlantic 10 this season going into the tournament. Yost, and here's Evans on the run. Tries to take it all the way, clobbered by Prue. <laughs> Evans under control. He can do anything you want. They give you three pointers. He gives you passes. Look at the double clutch. And he blows a right by Berger and picks up a semi trailer right there at the pass. Good foul, though. No chance for a three point shot here. Rare miss of the foul line. The all time foul shooting leader in Temple history. 84% from the line. He plays 39 minutes a game. You know, in 11 games this year, he has turned the ball over once or less. <laughs> he was the top player in high school coming out of the public league, just as his coach was, but a few years earlier. John Cheney was the top player uh, coming out in high school in the public league. The top player in the Catholic League that year, Tom Gola. And slowly but surely, the Temple Owls wearing down the Mountaineers of West Virginia. Even with Mark Macon on the bench for most of the second half in foul trouble, Temple has opened up their biggest lead of seven. Could it be ten? Ripped down by Shaw. Now the Mountaineers trying to beat the Owls back. Herbie Brooks lets it go. That guy's gun was rusting. 
is real anxious to get back in it. 50-45 in favor of Tempo. The crowd getting back into it. The steal by Brooks. He stays with it. No travel. Yost taken away by Tempo. And it was Evans who made the play. And now the foul in the backcourt by Tyrone Shaw. How things have changed. West Virginia had a chance to move to within three. But the foul on Shaw, it is his third. Yost coming out. Unfortunately, the freshman made a couple of crucial turnovers, some poor judgment. Tyrone Shaw back in there for him. This is no place for the faint-hearted or rookies with 11-19 to go in a five-point game, except one rookie, and that's Mark Macon. He's back in the game, and he is well-rested. Yeah, the gentle touch by the coach to his freshman, who should mean quite a bit to this coach in the next few years. He is a very intense player. He, he tends to be a little hyper which is natural when you're inexperienced. Rivas shoots 75% from the foul line. And now West Virginia has the chance again to trim it to three. 11 minutes, 11 seconds still to go in the second half. Both teams back with their starting line. Make it. Picked up his second and third fouls early in the second half. Brooks for three. Brew was not ready for it, and uh, luckily, an owl in front tipped it out of bounds. So we have a chance to sit back and regroup. 10.52 left in the second half. Temple with a big three-point shot working for him. Chris Brooks is back in with the four fouls. He scrambles for it and gets it. Big possession for West Virginia. Well, was a bad-looking shot. West Virginia fortunate to get it back. Again, offensive rebounds, keeping in the game. They had 13 offensive rebounds of their 20 in the first half. That was the outside shot they needed as Berger goes for three. Scrappy players in the backcourt and Berger and Brooks. Mountaineers, a great effort. They are hustling. The ball will not go down, and it shouldn't come as a surprise. They have not been a good shooting team now for about three weeks. Shaw, double team. Shot clock still shows 25 seconds. No need for Gail Cavett to change his game plan. He's hung tough with the nation's number one team now for three quarters. Berger on a force. And it's down to three. 50 to 47. Four straight points now for West Virginia. Ten minutes gone, ten to go in the second half. Could the Mountaineers pull off the upset? Knock off number one Temple. Cheney resting Howard Evans a bit by giving Macon the ball against the press. He is now three of 11 from the floor, and it's ripped down by West Virginia. Here's Berger racing out and trying to get control. Good judgment that time. He didn't have a handle on it. With Temple able to pack it in on West Virginia, why is West Virginia having so much success against four of the Owls on the offensive boards? Well, they got some good athletes in there, Al. Plus, those shots are coming off hard. I mean, they're not good shots. They're, they're just rocks, and that's help because they're going out deep. Berger for three! And it is ripped down by Perry. That close from tying the game. Nine minutes to go. Al Albert along with Bucky Waters. College basketball on USA. Macon continues to struggle. Perry cannot hold on. He went into the Raptors to get that ball, but came down and kicked it out of bounds. Another one of those incidents that you say, it's got to be an upset. I mean, Perry was up there all by himself and just lost it. Three-pointers for Temple, one for West Virginia. Temple coming off the 17-point win in North Carolina. Through in close. Rivas has the foul. The Mountaineers again able to make that entry pass down inside. And there just isn't much room. They caught the Owls that time napping. Perry not awake. The ball goes over the top. Rivas has to pick up the garbage, but he made sure that it was not a three-point play potential. 
Fourth foul on Rivas. He heads to the bench. Coswell is back in. Brew. Well, after making his first three foul shots. How do you explain that? Cruz reverting to last year's 38% form. I mean, and now, Dale Catlett takes out Brooks. Chris Brooks with the four fouls and puts Yost back in. What do you think's uh, behind that move? I don't know. Uh, it's hard to explain. Look at that. The first one doesn't hit anything, not even the bottom of the net. And the second one was clean. Why coaches grow old? It was once 50 to 43. It is now 50 to 48. Number two on Friesewick. So the Temple Owls have had about a half a dozen possessions without scoring. And now West Virginia in a position to tie it up with a basket. 8-13 left in the second half. Yost gets another shot out there. The freshman, number 25. Catlett coming right back with Yost. That's amazing. You know, that's... That's how you build confidence in players. It's a risk. This is an important game. NCAA bid may ride on the line with this one. Shot clock tells us 15 seconds to shoot. And here is Yost, who has a good shot from the outside. Maybe that's what they're looking for, but he passes it up. Touch glass by Coswell. And a timeout, 7.40 to go when we come back West Virginia will have the ball after these were distributed to the fans I guess we should just be thankful that uh, they weren't Bucky Water masks yes I am personally yeah <laughs> and that would have meant a great deal to me the three West Virginia now has had several opportunities to take the lead or tie the game and now Temple again goes at it with Macon on the bench, they open up a seven-point lead. Macon back on the floor, and West Virginia closing it. This foul is on Prue, so he has his third. That's why they pay us experts all those big bucks. We figure those things out. It's a wacky game. This Temple team almost was beaten in its own gym by Penn State, not having a good year. They go to Chapel Hill in the afternoon where teams get buried, and they blow the Tar Heels out. Uh, now they come back up here, and without making, they do better than they do with him. Makes no sense, and that's why it's a great game. Coswell finally hits a long drought for Temple is over. Look at this. Temple beats North Carolina by 17 after North Carolina just uh, gets by Maryland by one. Maryland earlier in the season lost to West Virginia by 26. That was uh, Maryland played a man for man. That's before teams really figured out the Mountaineers' problem was perimeter shooting. Since then, they've seen all kinds of zones and matchups. 51-48 Temple. Hanging on. Seven minutes down three. Temple, number one in the nation the last three weeks as they close out the regular season against Atlantic 10 competition. Duquesne, West Virginia, and St. Joe's left. The final four is not till April. Yost again with a freshman error. But since the AP started 40 years ago, only 17 teams that finished number one in the country went on to win the NCAA tournament. So it is not a fait accompli. And going way upstairs was Berger on that one. West Virginia with Berger down the lane. Prove aggressive rebound. And Prue for two. 14 now for Pro and it's a one point game and the Mountaineers are back in the pressure trying to capitalize on uh, Evans I think who's been out there the whole time making handling the ball that's confidence for the freshman Vrieswick home run 19 points for Vrieswick his fifth three-pointer and he matches the output he had Sunday in North Carolina well it's like a kick in a solar plexus your team's coming back, the crowd's in it, and he just stands out there in a tuxedo and buries it. Four-point bulge for the Owls. He sure knows how to turn the volume down on the crowd. Beauty by Poo, quick release between two Owls. That was a shot from the hip. 
Crew coming alive. He had six at halftime. He has 16. Perry wide open. Players pointing fingers at one another. Coswell points at Shaw, but Coswell has his second foul. And that will bring Ramon Rivas in for the final five and a half minutes, or as long as he could hang in there without getting an additional foul. And Daryl Prue back to the line. He has to improve his foul shooting just by the frequency of shots he's getting. Not necessarily, <laughs> Al. Not necessarily. It's a nightmare, an adventure. I'm telling you, the last one didn't hit the end line. Too quiet for him. Five of seven tonight. Remarkable for Prue, who will be celebrating his 21st birthday on Thursday. And that man with the carnation is going to live a lot longer if he can keep sticking those free throws. It's been a long climb. This for the tie. West Virginia just cannot get over the hump. It'll be interesting to see if the Mountaineers can ever get the lead. Pull Temple out of that matchup. And they may do so here. West Virginia on the run. Trailing by one. And Berger will set it up again. Working the shot clock. Five minutes, five seconds to go. I think this is the kind of a game most people expected in Chapel Hill. And they blew the uh, Tar Heels right out. The Mountaineers inspired here. Playing poorly, they have really rallied no matter what happens tonight. They have they lost three in a row. Effort. They had lost five out of six in the grasp now, taking the lead against the number one Owls. Who have won 22 and lost one. One point loss on the road against UNLV. The shot clock down to five. Off the screen, Brooks releases. Sure, the offensive board. And he brings it out. <laughs> A little bit of Marcus Haynes in there. Brooks! West Virginia leads! It is deafening in the Coliseum. The long climb, and they have finally hit the top of the mountain. Four minutes to go. Riva shuffles the feet and blows it. Perry on the rebound. Foul. Mike Nichols came from all the way in the back. You could not hear a thing, but that stride is unmistakable. Only a catcher can run like that, or a former catcher. It appeared to be a lot of contact inside. I thought Rivas got bumped. Well, the foul was called on Tyrone Shaw, number four. Chris Brooks had 12 points in the first half, but lassoed with foul problems in the second half. His first basket in the second half, and it put West Virginia in front. Now Perry trying to do something about that. Steve Berger getting over there awfully quick to seal the shooter. Three out of five for Perry on the line. Watch number four now. He almost jumps out there before the release. He gets there quick. Tim Perry comes through, swishes two from the foul line. And the lead for Westman up to his high school billing here tonight. And this is the play that will most be remembered by the crowd here to this point. As Brooks rises to the occasion and put the Mountaineers on top 55 to 54, but that has been erased by a couple of foul shots by Tim Perry. Well, again, we make the point, offensive rebounds. That's a startling stat until you figure it out. West Virginia is shooting horrendously, and there are a lot more boards for grabs, and the Temple Owls have been very, very efficient. Nine for 19 for the Owls, one for 10 from West Virginia, but the Mountaineers have been very tough down inside. And from a personal foul standpoint, they have Temple on the ropes. Rivas in particular with four, and he has been very crucial as an offensive outlet against West Virginia's pressure. Mark Megan held to eight points all in the first half. 
way off in his shooting. It was three for ten from the floor in the first half. Foul trouble in the second half. Shot clock shows 20. One point Temple lead. Very patient. What is crowd can get quiet and get loud in a New York minute. They count down the shot clock. It shows five seconds. A force by Brooks. And once again, West Virginia working the clock get down, but then to its disadvantage, not getting a good shot. You're absolutely right. They're just uh, just trying to get the ball on the glass. They don't seem to be getting uh, anything going to get them free. No Buck picks. Bucky, uh, you think they're taking it down too far. Very good point. They're taking it down to five seconds. And they almost have no chance on that second shot. Now, Temple shows some patience. 15 on the shot clock. 2.36 left in the second half. Temple by one. Mountaineers need a turnover. Get that lead and maybe try to pull Temple out. Three on the shot clock. It does not go. And it is yanked down by Shaw. Boy, Tyrone Shaw has got all kind of moves and fakes with that ball, both off the offensive board and the defensive board. A senior playing his last game here in the Coliseum. In the regular season, the Atlantic That's 10 right. championship will be held here in West Virginia. And the Mountaineers, after this performance, have to feel that uh, they may have a pretty good shot of winning the crown. 56-55 is the score. Temple hanging on by one. And Gail Catlett, who's trying to rally a team that has lost five of the last six. And John Cheney, who has lost just once in 23 games. Number one in the nation the last three weeks. And that could be in jeopardy tonight on the road. Coming off the biggest win of the season. And coming now into West Virginia. But as you stated before, you don't really feel as if Temple has uh, been suffering a letdown. That has not been the case tonight. Not really. They had the good start, which is where you had to look for the decompression after the marvelous performance. Cheney said this morning at the shoot-around, which, by the way, was 8.30, and I was there. No 5.30s for me when he practices normally, but I did manage an 8.30. Look at the intensity in that man. He wants perfection. He'll accept more. A great game tonight on USA, and we'll be seeing a great ball player Thursday night. Percy Hawkins coming off his 63-point performance for Bradley as they will be facing Tulsa Thursday at 9 p.m. Eastern right here on USA. Cheney this morning was less concerned about his team being let down. He's very confident that the even heel approach that they try to maintain at Temple would hold them in good stead. He was more concerned about the athletes that West Virginia had, this crowd, and the fact that they swapped home court losses last year. That was a very vivid reminder. So even though West Virginia was not playing well, there was no way they could sneak up on the Owls. Just under two minutes left in the second half. 15 seconds on the shot clock for West Virginia. Looking to make the headlines in this one. But the throwaway, the pass behind Prue. And there's the steady hands of Howard Evans to come up with it, and he'll call a timeout. So it is now Temple on the offense with a one-point lead, and John Cheney wants to make sure to get the right directions across. 137 left. Well, it's going to take uh, it's going to take an adventure. It's going to take a unique set of circumstances now. More than nice, nice flower. That's a that's a whole arrangement. Well, Gail Catlett has in his lapel. We'll see if it wilts in another 132. So Temple now with the advantage. There's the time remaining in the second half. Temple by one with the ball. Evans fakes the three. He was three of three from downtown in the first half. Can Temple preserve the win? Swish. Does he want the big shot or what? There's your senior, your point guard. Look at him exhorting his team. Last time you saw him on USA, he had a Temple record 20 assists in the win over Villanova. Berger answers. A three-pointer for Berger. And again, it's a one-point game. And again, Temple has the ball. This time, it's 47 seconds to go. This finish was scripted. 
you got a feel in your bones, you know, that something wacky's going to happen and the Mountaineers are going to bail out with it. You just, you just feel it. I don't think they're the better team, but there's some strange vibes out there all night long. 17 seconds to shoot. Bacon for three. And underneath a foul is called on West Virginia. Bacon has been offline all night, almost gave the ball back to the Mountaineers for the last shot. Boy, the rotation on that shot was east-west. It was ugly. I don't know what happened there. That ball just fell in the paint. It was absolutely the, the opportunity the Mountaineers needed. It was right there on a the platter. They not only couldn't come up with it, but they're sending Breezewick to the line. That looked like a Phil <laughs> Necro shot. <laughs> Tyrone nice. Shaw is hit with his fifth foul. So John Cheney knows that Friesewick, an 83% foul shooter, is on the line. The one and one. 19 seconds to go. Shaw, the rebounding presence, is now out of the game. And the youngster, Yost, is back in for the final 19 seconds. Temple, number one in the nation, holding on. And now they have a two-point lead. First foul shot of the night for Vrieswick, who has hit seven field goals, five of those the three-point variety. Look for Temple to come down with some soft pressure. If he makes this, it's a Mountaineer timeout. Catlett now going to go through the options. You Not a bad timeout. Seven of his 66 three-pointers this year. Designated hitter is Vincent. He was moved into the starting lineup earlier this season. Now it's a two-point game, and West Virginia calls a timeout to talk it over some more. 16 seconds to go, and they now have more options. And player and captain of the team in 1958, a 41% three-point shooter. I mean, this game should end like this, right? Number one, kid gets off the bench bold. Let's see. Well, you said there was something special in your script, but Macon's, Macon's got a contract on Vincent. Berger forces from three, partially deflected. Breezewick just waiting to be fouled. Six seconds left. Berger, who had recently hit a three-pointer. And Gail Catlett looking out towards the floor. Berger gives him a long look. Was that the play that was designed? I can't believe it. it, it he just took it, went to traffic and put up what was obviously a four shot. Not good discipline at the end of the game. West Virginia with Berger quarterbacking all. Breezewick goes back to the foul line where he had just hit one of two to set up that last rush by West Virginia. It's a three point game. Six seconds left. And this is the shot. They need four points in six seconds. Breezewick high with 22. Berger lets this one fly. Swish as the buzzer sounds. Berger let it go with one second on the clock. A shot that maybe 10 seconds earlier would have changed the whole complexion. But this one just signs the final signature on the scoreboard. Temple withstands West Virginia.